Greetings, unsettled souls. Welcome to The Correct Views. This is Sam I.B. DeGangi doing political commentary for the Media Speaks. You might know me from Blasting News. Ah, hate when it does that. You might know me from Blasting News. Uh, you might know me from Wits News. Um, the new Wits News article went up uh, a few days ago, and it was about Kamala Harris, so go to witsnews.com to find that out. Greg Halinski, greetings, my friend, and Matt. I want to mention, particularly to Greg, who is uh, going to probably be, uh, he'll know who this is. He'll be doing imitations of this person by his computer in a moment. I have full press passes to attend King Diamond on uh, November 23rd. And somewhere Greg is going, Hoo-rah! yes, I'm going to be, um, I got full press passes. I've got, uh, you know, I'm probably going to be one of the lucky schmucks with a lamb in it. I don't, I, I'm not scheduled to meet any of them, but we'll see how that goes a, as it progresses. But yes, I will be doing that. I am also playing keyboards with green jello in November. I think it's the 15th. I'll have to look again. But, um, it's in, if you're on Facebook, it's my image right now. I'm going to be uh, playing keyboards with Green Jello in November. I think it's like a week before the King Diamond show, and that's going to be at Buzzbin. It's the first time that I have uh, played keyboards in on stage in almost a year, which is unheard of for me, but uh, things kind of tanked for a moment, and I got frustrated, but I'm never too frustrated to play with Green Jello. Let's hear that. All right, friends, you came in for the dumdies. You want to hear the dunce cap of the month show. If you don't know what this is, if you're new to it, I find the stupidest, the dumbest, hello, Judy, the most retarded stories that I can possibly find. And I bring them to you to enjoy. And I mail out a dunce cap, all of that. If you wish to help, of course, you can donate at the correct views at hotmail.com. Do that through PayPal. The money you give to me goes towards things like mailing out dunce caps. All right, friends, the sun. Jihadi Kama, ISIS fighter, killed by drone bomb he was operating after it ran low on battery and flew back and bombed him. He bombed himself with his own drone. Do you ever hear, uh, you always hear the jokes about the people that don't read the instructions on the, um, on the box when it comes in? That would be this ISIS fighter. Uh, back when we were doing Melatonin Mondays, a lot of you will remember the graphic that I always use. The uh, prepare to be astounded. And he shoots the rocket and it hits the wall adjacent to the house he's in and blows up the house he's in. This is kind of like that. Um, if you read the instructions, you will find that in order for your drone to not just, you know, run out of battery juice X miles from your house, crash on the ground, and you never find it again. Drones are programmed to return after they don't, when they know they don't have enough battery to make it back if they don't. If you don't know that, and you're trying to arm them, you could be in for a pleasant surprise. You could be finding out that there really are no virgins waiting for you beside Allah. An ISIS terrorist blew himself up when the drone bomb that he was operating ran low on battery and flew back. The idiotic killer was targeting Allied forces after the Battle of Mosul in northern Iraq. He had customized his weapon, which he didn't read the instructions for, to carry plastic explosive and planned to detonate it by troops based in the city. But his plan backfired because he had forgotten to sufficiently charge the device Civilian drones are weaponized by ISIS, automatically boomerang back to the point of launch when they start to run out of power. They are programmed to return to prevent owners from losing their machines. <laughs> we learned this idiot had wired up this drone with explosives, but was killed when its batteries ran low and it flew home. With a weak signal, for some reason, it detonated over his head. This caused quite a laugh for us, but the drone threat is very real. The fighter killed himself, it says, last year due to his own ineptitude, but is still keeping morale high today. 
told you it was the Dunce Cap of the Month award show. I have not even been in the greatest mood. Uh, in, I don't know when, but these stories, the the level of stupidity that we're talking about here has held my attention quite nicely. Um, Steve Watson, Prison Planet, former FBI official. Trump ordered flags that have staff to honor Hitler. Now, sometimes you can't tell if something is fake news or not because it sounds like it might have maybe happened. You know, somebody will say, uh, even in entertainment, you keep getting these memes saying that K.K. Downing has rejoined Judas Priest. This is probably going to happen. I'm 99.9% .9 sure this is going to happen. So it, you kind of have to check it every time you hear because it's probably going to happen. Sometimes things are so outlandish that you can't even believe that they made it into print. First of all, that's not why flags are flown at half-mast. And as an FBI official, you should know that. Second of all, if that was the reason he did it, don't you think he'd lose a few votes? Don't you think it would be something that would have been front page news everywhere? In another bizarre performance on NBC News programming, this is why I tell you, you trust the mainstream media, I don't know about you. The stories that they push are the ones that they want to interject into your subconscious, but usually they're not based on anything. Conjecture in this case, um, a former FBI assistant director for counterterrorism, Frank Figaluzzi, claimed that President Trump may have ordered, may have ordered flags flown at half staff, not to honor the victims of Dayton or the El Paso shootings, but rather to celebrate Adolf Hitler. Figaluzzi explaining the reasoning behind this conspiracy theory, claiming that the date that the flag is to be at half-staff until August 8th, which is 888, is a neo-Nazi calling sign because the eighth letter of the alphabet is eight, which stands for Hitler, and the 88 means Heil Hitler. The this is the way that the side opposing Trump is thinking right now. Um, if this is the kind of thing they're going to believe, I wouldn't be surprised if they're one of those people that think they know when the end of the earth is by adding up, you know, biblical references. Which is always funny. They're like, well, you could tell because this was Matthew 8 and this was John 9. They didn't have the numbers back then. It's not a hint. It's not a code. You're wrong. Um, Breitbart.com. Taylor Swift has made the show repeatedly. She has to be one of the dullest crayons in the box. Taylor Swift demands equal pay for women's soccer stars. This isn't over yet. Now, why is it stupid? Did I suddenly decide that I hated women? No. Let's look at what they're getting paid. Pop superstar, why, by the way, she's wretched. Her voice is terrible. It's not as bad as Beyonce, but it's bad. Pop superstar Taylor Swift joined the chorus of left-wing activists demanding the rectification of dubious gender pay gap for female soccer stars while accepting the Icon Award at the Teen Choice Awards on Sunday for the U.S. women's soccer captain Alex Morgan. Now, keep in mind... I have zero interest in watching soccer. I would wa rather watch paint dry. But, hey, Patrick, I would rather watch paint dry. However, if I was going to watch soccer, I would not watch soccer from a team that was beaten by a 14-year-old soccer team. But, but I should say a soccer team full of 14-year-olds. Yes, the great U.S. women's soccer team was beaten by 14-year-old boys. So I, I respect what they're doing. I don't wish to censor what they're doing. I wish them all the success that they have earned and that they got. But this here is ridiculous. 
First, I want to talk about Alex Morgan, Taylor Swift began, repeating the false assertion that women players are underpaid, despite the fact that they bring in significantly less revenue than their male counterparts. In other words, not that many people are watching. That's like saying that I deserve as much money for doing this show as Rush Limbaugh gets. The fact that she's here presenting this to me is such an honor, and not only winning the World Cup with her amazing teammates, right? While they were winning the World Cup, they were also take, ta taking a historic stand in terms of gender quality and the new gender pay gap. Please, please, please support her and her teammates because this isn't over yet. It's not resolved. Nobody's watching, so you're not making anything. In March, the women's soccer team launched a gender discrimination lawsuit against the United States Soccer Federation. I told you, it's the Does Cap of the Month award show. For allegedly violating the Equal Pay and uh, Civil Rights Act, the lawyer Jeffrey Kessler recently confirmed... My page is reloading. Recently confirmed the case was moving full speed ahead. However, the case may have already hit a dead end. In late July, Carlos Cardero, president of the U.S. Soccer Federation, released financial data which showed that the U.S. women's national team has actually made more money than the men's team. We're complaining. Shut up. Listen, over the past decade, U.S. soccer paid our women's national team more than our men's national team, Cordero said in a letter. From 2010 through 2018, U.S. soccer paid our women $34.1 million in salaries and game bonuses, and we paid our men just $26.4 million, not counting the significant additional value of various benefits that our women's players receive, but the men do not. Oh, so the women are getting more benefits and more money, and they're still complaining with less people watching. From, 20, from 2009 through 2019, a time frame that includes two Women's Cup championships, he writes. The women's national team has earned gross revenue of $101.3 million over 238 games, with an average of $425,446 per game, the soccer chief added. And the men's national team has earned a gross revenue of $185. 5.7 million, which sounds to me like more than 101.3 million. Call me an idiot. Over 191 games, so they made it far less. They uh, almost, uh, what, uh, 40, 45 games less for an average of 972,147 per game. More specifically, he writes, uh, WNT games have generated a net profit, ticket revenues minus events expenses, in only two years, 16 and 17. Across the entire 11-year period, WNT games generated a net loss of $27.5 million. So they weren't paid for losing money in general. And when they get paid more, they still complain about it. You know what they're mad about? That nobody cares. Literally, people listening to me talk about this are like, God, I hope he's done talking about soccer. <laughs> I am. Uh, Paul Joseph Watson, the Prison Planet. How about we ban normalcy? Am I saying I'm normal? No. But I'm saying I don't think we need to ban those that are. Volkswagen commercial banned in UK because it shows women caring for a baby. Oh, the horror. The ad presented gender stereotypes in a way that is likely to cause harm. Because just seeing a normal mother, I said the word normal, if you don't like it, tune out. Just seeing a normal mother care for her kid is so horrible and so horrific that it's like the crybabies that can't go and see it. <gasps> By the way, if you're afraid of clowns, you're either looking for attention or you're stupid. But again, it's a well-written book. A Volkswagen commercial has been banned in the UK for violating gender stereotypes because it showed a woman caring for a baby. Now, 
It's no secret that I'm not always the most chipper person in the world, particularly the way that the last two years have gone. But if I ever reach a point to where just watching a woman chilling with her baby in a car commercial triggers me, would somebody please pull the trigger on a gun and just put me out of it? Yes, really, the ad shows a scene of a woman and a man in a tent on a cliff face. Yeah, that's normal. Two male astronauts floating in a spaceship, because everyone gets to do that, and a male para-athlete with a prosthetic leg doing a long jump. So, you know, clearly they were against anybody who would be seen as different or handicapped or otherwise disabled or, you know, you know what I mean. They went out of their way to show extremes. And then they also went ahead and appealed to people who, thankfully, I'm, I'm happy the para-athlete did well, to, you know, someone who isn't injured. And I'm not saying we shouldn't have uh, people, disabled people or disabled athletes, if you want to call them, in commercial. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying is, it's not traumatic to anybody with a prosthetic leg to see somebody feeding a baby. Have you lost our minds? At the end of the clip, a woman is seen on a bench next to a pram. That's, it's PJ Dub, a baby buggy. The commercial was banned by the UK Advertising Standard Authority. After just three people complained, with the ASA asserting that it violated gender stereotype rules. So you're not even allowed to see a heterosexual couple anymore. You're not allowed to even see them. But if it's some guy giving birth through his penis, it'll be the, the main focus of the ad. You won't even see the car. You'll just see the penis. By juxtaposing images of men in extraordinary environments and carrying out adventurous activities with women who appeared passive or engaged in a stereotypical caregiving role, we considered the ad directly contrasted. So because it wasn't the woman astronaut and the guy feeding the baby, they banned the ad. This is the kind of thing that is going to get Trump elected once again. Now, I understand this is in England, but this ridiculous mindset is festering in America as well. Yes, I did say a festering. I hope I offended you that did not agree. If you're that easily offended, to make you more offended, I'll sit by. What, what's a manly thing? Aha! Uh -huh. oh, oh, a man with a tool! Oh, terror. Terror of terrors. Can't watch this video. Um, Paul Joseph Watson, Prison Planet. Miss Nevada banned from entering Miss America over her support for Trump. Now, this, I hope, is a lawsuit of biblical proportions. Can anybody please, perhaps in the comment line, tell me how you can be in trouble for supporting the legally elected president of the United States. I don't think we've ever had a worse president than Obama, but I don't think that anybody should have been banned from entering a contest because they supported him. This goes against every single right that a person has. So I am hoping that she sues the, uh, if anybody knows where this has gone, let me know. I hope she sues them blind. Uh, it says, correction, an earlier version of this article listed the organization concerned as Miss America. The organization is actually MS.America, which is a different Miss America. Miss Nevada, S-I-S-S, -S, says she was banned from competing in the MS Miss America Beauty Contest because of her refusal to hide her support for President Trump. Why would you have to hide your support for anyone? I am officially disqualified from competing in the MS Miss America pageant in 2019, said Katie Jo Williams in an Instagram video. She says organizers told her she was too political to be involved. America. You are not allowed to be, this is the dust cap of the month award show, mind you. You are not allowed to be political in America when you are in the Miss America pageant and you are supporting the leader of 
America, to whom the pageant shares the name of. Williams asked what she could do to resolve the issue and was told the only recourse was to delete everything that she posted on social media. So now they're allowed to go through your social media account and decide if you're pretty or smart enough to get it. No, decide if your political views line up to screaming socialist values. And again, I'm far more libertarian than conservative, but I'm far more common sense than anything else. The director of the pageant sent screenshots, which included pictures of Williams in her Trump 2020 hat, <gasps> professing her love for America and her opposition to Antifa, making it clear that they all needed to be erased. Williams refused and subsequently stripped of her MS Miss Nevada title. Organizers then told Williams that in order to get a refund for her entry fee, she would have to send back her sash and crown for winning Miss MISS Nevada and agree not to tell anyone about being banned from MS America. So they tried to hide what they did. They knew what they did was so bad they had to hide it. I feel like if I had more liberal views, less conservative views, that this wouldn't even be an issue, Williams said. I stand by everything that I posted. So this is for Miss Williams. Here we go. Here you go, my dear. That that's for you, my dear. All right. Um, CNS News. Again, I hope there's a lawsuit there. I'll, I would support her greatly. Um, CNS News. Bernie Sanders, prisoner bill of rights, guarantees free phone calls, video chats, and a living wage. Now, friends, let me explain to you why this is a bad idea. But before I do so, let me remind you that I think we have too many people locked up in prison. I think that too many things are illegal. I'm against 99.9% .9 of what the uh, prison industrial complex stands for. However, there are people that try to run their intimidation practices against witnesses, their drug business, their gang activity, their whatever, they try to do this through, from the prison cell. Now, if you give them cell phones, Mr. Sanders, and you give them access to all of these technological advances, Mr. Sanders, then don't you think that there's a good chance, Mr. Sanders, that they're going to continue with these intimidation practices and the very things you lock them up for from prison. Now, I, again, I don't mind that they pay them for the work. I do think they probably, you know, I don't have a problem paying them for their work. Depending on how much they're already costing the state, that's, that's up for each state to decide. That's why we're called the United States, which is another reason that Bernie should stay out of it Come to think of it, he should stay out of the White House. Um, he shouldn't even be allowed to visit. Listen to this, uh, Breitbart.com. Um, note, might be Nolte. New York Times, Brett Stevens threatens man's job for calling him a bed bug. Now, I don't know about you, but I, I expediently went to his Twitter page and said, hello, bed bug. I could not resist the opportunity. Now, it's funny because... I do want to say this. I don't know if any of you listening to this have ever suffered through the hell that is known as bed bug infestation. But those of us who have lived in the city have been through it a time or two. My parent, my mother had to move out of her house for two years to get rid of them. And this was, you know, she was 67, 68 years old. She, my parents got them. My dad died in 11, uh, 12, my mom in 14. Um, side note here for regular listeners. They didn't go anywhere. You know what I mean? They didn't do anything. They went to Walmart. They called taxis to go out to eat. They, you know, they, they, that's the only place they could have gotten them from. Well, they got them. Unless a neighbor brought them over sitting on the porch. Everywhere, and it makes you loathe the creature at a level to which you would never guess. Um, I do have a heads up for anybody that uh, wants to avoid having to get rid of your furniture if you live in a city or an apartment complex. 
I found that getting a water bed is a great idea because when we had uh, bed bugs, when my parents had them, when we had them, I had to get rid of almost all of my furniture. And then my wife and I bought a water bed because you can take them apart, which is a pain in the ass, but you can take them apart and not have to get rid of your entire bed. But anyway, my point being here is if you've ever suffered a bed bug infestation, then you end up with this hatred of the mere word that you just seethe whenever you think about it. And you can tell that the New York Times has it. And I'm willing to bet, not only does the New York Times have bed bugs, but I bet you, I bet you this hat that Brett Stevens had them in his house. And I'm not cracking on him. They're not attracted to, well, I am cracking on him, but not for this. They're not attracted to filth. They're not attracted to dirt. And you get bed bugs. They're attracted to blood. If you have blood, then you have you could have bed bugs. I guarantee, I, I'm telling you, he had them in his house, or still does. And they have created so much misery and unhappiness for him that being called a bed bug was like being called the very devil himself. It was like being called the N-word for a black person. It was seething rage. But it's still funny. Um, update. Snowflake Stevens just killed his Twitter account. Another update. You've got to watch this. Stevens went on MSNBC and basically compared being called a bedbug to the Holocaust and claimed, you're not going to believe this, he CCD'd the man's boss not to harm him professionally, but to make his boss aware that his employee is like Hitler and stuff. He tried to get the man fired for calling him a bed bug. <laughs> he then invites the guy to his house. I would welcome the opportunity for you to come to my home, meet my wife and kids, Talk to me for a few minutes and then call me a bed bug to my face, the email read in part. That would take some genuine courage and intellectual and in integrity on your part. I promise to be courageous or cor courteous, excuse me. I'm, I promise to be courteous. <laughs> <coughs> No matter what you say, I promise I'm not going to attack you. No, if you are so unbelievably weak that being called a bed bug leads you to try to get somebody fired, then you're probably not going to hit anybody and you're probably going to lose the fight if you do. The most prestigious newspaper in the world, they write, completely freaked out over being called a bedbug. Got so freaked out and angry, he took the time to hunt down the offender's email address, composed the email to the offender, and tried to have the offender getting in trouble with his boss. What kind of panty waist Nancy boys are we hiring at the New York Times? That's awesome. That's that's just great. So I encourage all of you to go to his uh, his existing pages and to call him a bedbug. And friends, that brings us to the Dunce Cap of the Month Award winner. Where's my music? That's not the music. Where's my dummy music? There it is. If you would like to help me keep uh, the show going, if you'd like to help me be able to afford the... Uh, the fun that is paying to mail out dunce caps, you can help me out at the correct views at hotmail.com through PayPal. I put the money towards things like a better show, um, mailing out hats, more research time, buying hats to anger liberals. It's wonderful. Um, Chris Manhan, Information Liberation. I don't even really wear ball caps for reasons that are painfully obvious right now, but we're going to go with it. Um, YouTube CEO says that it's more important than ever to be an open platform one day after massive banning spree. Now, if you're watching my show on YouTube, which many of you do, um, if, if you take a look over to the sidebar, 
there's a better than average chance that you don't see other correct views videos. Now, doesn't that strike you as just mildly unusual considering the fact that I have 900 videos up? Doesn't that seem a little bit weird? Doesn't that seem like YouTube might be going out of their way to either outright repress what I'm saying by preventing more people from finding it when it should legitimately come up on your uh, search engine, particularly those of you who have listened repeatedly, you should have a number of them on the side. Do you? I'd be interested to hear this. My guess is that you do not. Um, another thing is to uh, shift it towards the major news networks who are not only paying big dollar, but paying big dollars so that only their version of what happened can be reported on, which is in many instances anything but the truth, which can be verified and proven if you have the facts to do it, which they repress. So I think it's interesting that they would go ahead and uh, that's why they've won the Dunce Cap of the Month. I'm going to show you the hat. I'm going to show you the award, the whole nine yards. YouTube CEO Susan, would you see, would you, would you kicky, would you sicky, said Tuesday, ask Kiki Kiki that it's a more, it's a, that's a new city in Hawaii, the city of ask Kiki Kiki, where you get your ask Kiki Kiki for saying stupid things. The, oh, uh, they'll go half man. Hate speech. He told a joke. It's hate speech. Fine. Hate speech. YouTube CEO Susan Ask Kiki Kiki said Tuesday that it's more important than ever for YouTube to remain an open platform just one day after going on a massive banning spree targeting right-wingers for so-called hate speech. Again, uh, the article is found at Liberation Informa uh, Information Liberation. It says, uh, according to Vox, the YouTube CEO Susan Ask Kiki Kiki says it's more important than ever to let people upload anything they want. That means the video platform is okay with content that is outside the mainstream, controversial, or even offensive. First of all, they ban it. Where do you see Farrakhan? I'm not a Supreme. I'm not, I don't support Farrakhan. I think he's a racist jerk. Where's Farrakhan's videos? I think he should have a right to speak. I don't like him. I think he should have a right to speak. I think if you watch 15 videos on Farrakhan, then you should have Farrakhan in your sidebar. What? Is that nuts? Do you see Alex Jones? Do you see Paul Joseph Watson? Do you see, where are these, where's these people then that weren't banned? And then of course, people, other people you can upload stuff, but they'll make sure that you never see it. So yeah, our platform's open for you to, uh, for many of you to upload stuff if we don't like what you see, but, or what we hear, but we'll make sure that nobody sees it. Amazingly, this is not satire. From Vox. Can the world's largest video company continue to let its 2 billion users upload anything they want, whenever they want? Continue? They haven't allowed that for years! How did people on Vox not mention this? Yes, says the woman who runs the company, in a letter addressed to the creators on YouTube, CEO Susan S. Kiki Kiki says that the platform is committed to remaining open because she thinks the upside of the approach very much outweighs the downside. After everybody was banned that she doesn't like and everybody else that she doesn't like who isn't banned isn't seen due to their programming. This isn't a new idea and it's one that Wojciechowski along with people who run other giant tech platforms say in private all the time. But as Kiki Kiki is saying it again today as critics are increasingly questioning if it's a philosophy that works for tech companies on a global scale. So Vox, by their little wording there, is encouraging the banning and saying that Miss Ask Kiki Kiki here is too far to the right, even though she bans everybody that's not a raging socialist. You see how creepy that is. For Vox, she hasn't gone far enough. For anybody that's read the Constitution, She's one of the most repressive, powerful, pe repressively powerful people in the country. 
I believe preserving an open platform is more important than ever, she writes in a quarterly note aimed at YouTube's most ardent users who upload videos on the site for fun and profit. What profit? Nobody can see the video. Ask Milo. While the note is usually dedicated to celebrating YouTube's wide swath of creators, this one spends most of the time defending the idea that YouTube will continue to keep its doors open to anyone who wants to post about anything on the site. That is provably untrue. It is provably untrue. We're reaching levels of propaganda never before thought possible, the artist writes. So, I'm going to go ahead and show you the hat that I'm sending them. You guys up top, I will move the camera so you can see the award. You guys, I got a heart from somebody. You guys on YouTube, I am going to uh, have to post the award in the comment line. All right, guys, here we go. This is what's being mailed. These are remarkably expensive to mail out, by the way. Um, Dunce. Here we have a fun. I like my artwork there. I'm proud of that one. It looks pretty decent. Yeah. It says, uh, you can YouTube. How can YouTube support free speech when they ban facts? There's always, uh, there's my, uh, my, my no symbol, like the no smoking. It's sort of one of my uh, calling cards with these hats. There is another gentleman with a great big finger pointing upwards. And he writes, an open platform, you say, and the no smoking signs have the names of Alex Jones, Milo, Paul Joseph Watson, and Farrakhan. Uh, the logo of liars, I wrote. And uh, I got one other thing on here, I think, don't I? Oh, yes, a couple things. One of them says, MAGA, by breaking up YouTube. And, ah, I'm breaking. And the other thing says, it's a computer. I just drew a laptop. In the name of free speech, we censor people. And I suggested that it's a new YouTube screen idea. Now that is being mailed to them, along with the award that I am going to read to you and then show to you um, up there. And uh, like I said, I'll post it on the comment line for you Facebookers. I don't have a printer. If you would like to donate money for me to buy a printer, the correct views of Hotmail.com through PayPal. I would love you. Um, the dunce cap of the month. This dunce cap of the month goes to Susan Wachsicki, not just because she bans factual content and then pretends to present an open platform, but because she is actually doltish enough to think that no one would notice. For failing to understand that we see the lies, this dunce cap was earned. And then, of course, I list the address for the show. Um, friends, that's the Dunce Cap of the Month Award Show. Thank you very much for listening. Hit share, hit subscribe. You guys want to see the award. I know. There it is. Isn't it beautiful? All right, friends. Good night. And God bless. Thank you greatly for listening.